Is NVIDIA getting too big for their britches? Some people say they are. Let's talk about it. Welcome to AI Insights and Innovation, your go-to podcast for the latest news, trends, and insights in artificial intelligence, including generative AI. I'm your host, David Linthicum, author, speaker, b geek, longtime AI systems architect, and analyst at ThugCube Research. Let's get into the topic. Well, this kind of caught my attention this week because the amount of news uh, that was coming out about NVIDIA. And as everybody who's, uh, unless you've been living under a rock uh, for the last year or so, two years or so, uh, the explosion of, of interest in generative AI has also been the explosion in processors that do the best at processing generative AI, which are going to be GPUs or graphics processing units. Um, as we mentioned on this podcast before, the reason that uh, AI developers like to leverage these is because they can take a divide and conquer approach in doing inference processing, training processing, things like that, and do lots of things at the same time, which is very good for what AI processing is. And so therefore, many AI developers prefer leveraging GPUs. And if you look at the GPU market, it's dominated by NVIDIA that's been in that market for quite some time. Uh, and they have uh, a software ecosystem that sits around it. It's called CUDA basically APIs and interfaces that allow you to easily develop uh, AI-based systems to do uh, uh, tr to train models, to leverage models for inference. Uh, so NVIDIA has been enjoying quite a meteoric rise, a re-rise in the industry. Certainly, they've become an extremely valuable company in terms of their stock price. Uh, I think they're, they were number one for a while. I think now they're third in the world as far as uh, the most valuable companies. Good for them. And Going forward, we're just going to kind of look at uh, what that means to the industry and what's likely to happen to NVIDIA over the next few years, both good and bad. So what happened this week is that French regulators um, are charging NVIDIA with anti-competitive practices, making France the first country to take take such action against the world's leading chip maker. Uh, and so what they've done is basically raided the offices, they've gathered what they're uh, saying is evidence that there's going to be anti-competitive practices at NVIDIA. I don't know French law. I'm not here to make a legal diagnosis. It's just interesting that the antitrust uh, lawsuits are starting to approach NVIDIA. That's kind of early in the market. You think about it, generative AI is certainly a hot space, but as far as it, you know, uh, creating or invoking like a hockey stick, I don't think that's happened yet. So, Everybody has their eyes on NVIDIA. If they think of generative AI technology, you think of NVIDIA. And the concern is, is that they're going to become too dominant. They're going to control the market space. Uh, they're going to have anti-competitive practices. And I understand where that's coming from. And by the way, we've been here before. If you look at um, the browser wars and, you know, lawsuits against Microsoft, Google, you know, other big tech companies that had a very successful run in a particular space. And the concern was that they were going to behave in anti-competitive ways as well. Sometimes that occurred, sometimes it didn't. But at the end of the day, uh, this was about them being very successful in dominating a particular sector of the market. And lots of people, including regulators, being concerned that that's going to have a negative effect on the competitive behavior of other companies out there. The, the thing here is that you're not forced... To, you're not forced to use NVIDIA GPUs in building AI systems, as we talked about here before. You can build AI systems, and most of them will be built this way, by the way, with traditional uh, CPUs. Sometimes they're going to be TPUs or tensor processor units. And we have a whole bunch of innovative processors that are coming down the line that are in the roadmap now that the, the, pro, that the processor manufacturers are going to release that are going to be competitive to NVIDIA. Now, some people point to the CUDA, stuff, the ability to interface and, and build these systems, again, you're not forced to use that either. I understand it may be the path of least resistance in certain instances, but open standards are likely to emerge. Open frameworks are likely to emerge. And there's a lot of work going on behind the scenes now, which is going to make this a much more competitive and is going to level the playing field in terms of processors out there, uh, API interfaces out there, uh, software frameworks for generative AI frameworks, things like that. So uh, the Silicon Angle uh, does a really good job in covering this, and uh, namely uh, Mike Weekly. Uh, France is poised to slap NVIDIA with antitrust charges. 
uh, stemming from the AI dominance. And so um, this is the article up here. I urge you to read it. It's going to be linked in the description below. But it's interesting to see where all this will go. Sometimes what happens is the market kind of adjusts itself. So in other words, a lot of competitors emerge. Uh, NVIDIA will continue to be a strong competitor in the marketplace, but th people may not care as much about it if uh, Intel and AMD and other processor companies are making larger strides to build chips that are competitive to the NVIDIA's dominance in the, in, in the generative AI market and probably software frameworks and interfaces that they're going to be able to build as well. And we'll talk a little later about some comments from the uh, Intel CEO uh, around this. So this is uh, going to be uh, a bit of a, say, a rough period, interesting period, uh, I think for the next year, year and a half, uh, when there is a mad rush to get into the generative AI market, a few players are likely to dominate at the beginning of the market, just like just like in the beginning of cloud computing, just like the beginning of the internet. We had a few players that dominated the space. But the way the technology industry is set up, that's not going to last for a long period of time. Other more competitive uh, technologies will get into the mix. And we have lots of venture capital money, lots of publicly traded companies, Intel, AMD, that are building technology in the space to compete with NVIDIA. It's just going to take some time for them to get these technologies out. And that doesn't mean we're diminishing the value of NVIDIA. Yeah, you have to give them credit where credit's due. They built an innovative chipset and they built an innovative software infrastructure that allows people to build extremely powerful AI systems in the case of generative AI systems. But you don't have to use it. You don't have to. There's other ways to build uh uh, generative AI systems, it doesn't have to be a GPU, it can be a CPU, other competing processors, things like that. So I'm a little confused about what they mean by anti-competitive behavior, because it may be good, but that doesn't mean they're being anti-competitive. And there's lots of other options out there that I think we're not even considering right now. When I talk to people who are building generative AI systems, they normally go to the fact, well, we're going to have to get uh, a bunch of GPUs. And I hear there's a shortage. Let's go ahead and make an investment and buy 100 of them now, or let's buy 10,000s of them now. Uh, or let's, if you're a cloud provider, doing the same thing. That's not needed. Uh, the majority of the business applications are going to be built. Uh, the generative AI applications are going to be built within businesses are going to be small language models. are going to be very tactical uses of AI technology. Uh, you think about this. We talked about this on a... Uh, a couple of episodes ago, AI is going to be on our phone with Apple intelligence. And we don't need these big honking systems to run the AI systems. I think they're going to be more useful to us. If you're building an LLM and you're going to sell it as a service, you know, for example, industry specific LLMs, things like that. And there's lots of people who are going to get into that business where it takes, you know, 12 days to build the model from the data that's out there and $12 million in processor time to make it happen. And that's, that's the real amount of money that you need. That's going to be a capability that is going to require a GPU. But that is something that most businesses are not going to build. So, you know, just kind of keep that in mind. So... Again, NVIDIA's alleged mon monopolistic behavior includes the strategic use of CUDA software and investments in AI cloud services. Uh, and, and by the way, every service company out there, every consulting company out there, every cloud company out there, every software company out there has a partnership with NVIDIA. It's almost, you know, it, it's almost uh, crazy to think. And that may be causing some of this anti-competitive concern. Uh, and I understand why, because if they're... A uh, powerful force in the market. You want to be aligned with them, just like they wanted to be a partner with AWS when they started to get a me meteoric rise back in 2010, 2012. And we're seeing the same thing here. That doesn't mean as the market changes and innovates, they're not going to partner with other chip makers. Uh, I don't think in, many of these are exclusive. I would be surprised if they are an exclusive thing. They're just trying to get a bigger bite in the market. Um, the concern there is that many of these organizations are trusted advisors to build and deploy these generative AI systems. And if they're by default always going to NVIDIA GPUs to build it, they may not be building uh, those generative AI systems with the most optimized technology. They may be overbuilding, over engineering. I uh, talked about that in an InfoWorld article uh, a few weeks back. And that being the case, um, there may be some bad decisions being made in terms of overbuilding a lot of these existing uh, generative AI systems and automatically 
uh, deferring to NVIDIA GPUs when traditional CPUs may work just fine, certainly going to be a lot cheaper, take less power. And so we need to consider all the options in building these systems. So what are the consequences for NVIDIA? Well, if, that, if found guilty, they could face fines up to 10% of its global annual revenue. That's a lot of money, by the way. And the company might have uh, 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 consequences to avoid penalties, which could impact its market strategies and product offerings. So what does this mean globally? Obviously, uh, NVIDIA operates in most countries, uh, uh, most industrialized countries, at least. While France leads the charge, uh, other investigations, similar investigations are underway in the U.S. and EU, suggesting a broader scrutiny of NVIDIA's marketing practices, market practices. So we'll wait and see the way those things bear out. I suspect by the time they make a case that the market will shift uh, around competitors, making the market look a little bit more level uh, in the playing field. So NVIDIA will not have uh, as much of an influence as they do now. I think they'll still grow like crazy because... Uh, in rising tides, all boats rise, uh, including NVIDIA's and their competitors. And I think there's no end to the demand for building these generative AI systems. And the business are demanding that these systems be built. And you have to have processors to make these things happen. But I just think the market's going to normalize. Just like cloud computing, the internet, software development, everything where somebody you know, screamed anti-competitive practices, let's look at this particular company. And by the time they made their cases, uh, the market normalized itself. And by the way, I, I don't think those are uh, choices made by the companies that are under scrutiny. I think these are choices that are made by the market, which normalizes around innovation. And normally, we don't like to buy, uh, concentrate innovate, innovation and concentrate buying within a particular company, NVIDIA being the case here. We like to spread it out between multiple technologies, multiple companies. That's just kind of the way IT runs their practices. So what about community and industry pushback against NVIDIA? Well, the critics are arguing that NVIDIA's steep market control uh, via the CUDA stuff, they keep focusing on that. So it's not just the processor, it's the software in infrastructure around it, which they view as closed and proprietary, which, which kind of it is. It's going to be very difficult for you to build something using the CUDA ecosystem and then move it to, to another set of processors. Uh, you're going to have to pay to rewrite the code and things like that. By the way, that's the case with everything that's out there. Whether you're dealing with native cloud services, you're dealing with native services that are around a particular chipset, in this case, CUDA. Um, so it being the preferred platform right now for many uh, AI engineers and AI developers that are building these systems, that's what's going on. So and they're calling for more standards in the AI and GPU sectors, obviously open source stuff. Uh, that's the battle cry anytime we th see things that are proprietary. And we're probably going to see some open source, open system uh, emerging efforts that occur o over the next few years. Those move slower, by the way. Uh, so that's why we're not seeing them right now. So you got to remember, it's a consortium of vendors that come together and decide on a standard. And that's not an easy thing to do. And it takes about four times as much time than versus a CTO sitting in a room with his or her developers and his or her architects, and then coming up with innovative solutions and going off and building it. You have to come up with a consensus. You have to come up with additional frameworks. You're dealing with multiple companies. It's going to take time for you to normalize uh, those ideas and get into some sort of an open source arrangement uh, that people you know, can agree on. And uh, so it'll happen. Uh, some of that stuff is happening now. There's certainly open source uh, AI frameworks out there, AI architectures, reference architectures, things like that. And now the focus is on getting to the generative AI space with open source software ecosystems uh, that can compete with CUDA. And I think we are gonna see some frameworks that are, that are coming up. So where are these, where are these gonna come from? Well, I think they're going to be funded by the competitors to NVIDIA. So uh, the CEO of Intel, and this Pat uh, Gilsinger, uh, came out swinging at NVIDIA's CUDA technology, claiming the inference technology will be more important than training for AI as he launched Intel Core Ultra in fifth gen Xeon data center chips at an event in New York this week, uh, taking to the question, uh, the suggestion that NVIDIA's CUDA dominance and training would last forever. And it's not. It's, it's, you're going to have, it's, there's going to be no single technology that dominates the space. It's just too big. Uh, and companies are not going to buy for a single source vendor. They're going to look for innovation from coming out of a variety of ways. And you got to remember, if we're an architect and looking at this technology, I'm going to take 
the best and most optimized processor set to apply to my particular space. And sometimes it's going to be NVIDIA. Sometimes it's going to be Intel. Sometimes it's going to be AMD. Sometimes it's going to be uh, different hybrid chips that are starting to be uh, invented. In mobile-based frameworks, it's going to be a different set of chips. So we're getting into the it depends kind of situation with, gen with generative AI. They're not going to be built the same. We don't have to be b building these things as huge honking systems that cost many millions of dollars each and every time we deploy these within a business. And certainly uh, NVIDIA's uh, GPU chipset and their software ecosystem is going to play in the framework. And, by, and we should thank them for innovating in this space, but it's not going to be the only game in town at the end of the day. So is NVIDIA getting too big for their britches? I don't think so. I think they're just they're just uh, doing what companies do when they see so much wind behind their sails and they're taking advantage of it while they can because they understand that that's not going to last forever. So creating the partnerships, creating the innovation frameworks, uh, you know, gathering customers and locking those customers in, that's just the way technology businesses work. And NVIDIA is no different. And I don't think it should be something that we consider anti-competitive. It should be something that we look at as a common pattern in terms of net new technology and innovative technology as it emerges into a new space, in this case, generative AI. Well, don't forget to join the conversation. I'd, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. If you believe NVIDIA's practices are stifling competition or they are simply leveraging their market-leading technology responsibly, share your insights and questions and let me know what you want to cover on this particular podcast. Uh, Obviously, this is more toward current events. Sometimes we do podcasts that are teaching podcasts and teaching videos. Uh, in this case, we're talking about the evolution of the market. Um, so don't forget to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon to stay updated on the latest episodes. And I'll see you guys in the comments. You guys take care. Cheers. Cheers.